the high-octane offense of Team Canada. We're just baby steps into this tournament. It's day three. This is the lay of the land in Pool A. Scotland will get its act going in our nightcap. Australia and Canada are in search of victory. Team USA and England, they're off to very nice starts. It is so nice to see you again. Alongside Courtney Martinez, Connor, a five-time national champion at Maryland. I'm Joe Beninati. This is where the pressure ratchets up court. How are these two teams approaching the game tonight? Well, first and foremost, they're both searching for that first win of the 2022 World Lacrosse Championships. You had Australia coming up a bit short last night in a tough loss to England. It was a big battle. However, on opening night, Australia was in a tight one with Team USA, but again, coming up a little bit short. Australia needs to focus on solid defense. They have two very strong netminders who would appreciate the effort in front of them. Addie Cunningham and Carly Evans, they're going to need to be on their A game tonight. They share netminding duties for Australia. They each battle when making saves. However, it's clearing the ball that they're going to need to really take their time against a potent offense. It's easier said than done in defending against Canada. Aurora accordingly and Dana Doby, they pack a potent one-two punch. Dana Doby, she is a veteran for Team Canada. She does such a great job of winning the ball at the draw control for her team, but it's her offensive skill. She just manages to know when and where to shoot around every defender who's trying to lock her down. Aurora accordingly, she's the newcomer for Team Canada. Last time she was wearing those jerseys, she was playing for the U19 team, but it's a fresh face, she has a lot of energy, and she likes to razzle and dazzle around that goal cage. There's a whole lot of bounce to her game. It's two teams eager to jump into the win column. Australia and Canada ready to renew acquaintances in a Friday night funhouse. The opening draw, right around the corner. Every player knows the skills you learn on the field can be the foundation for anything you choose to do in life. Thank you for the sweat, the tears, the pride, and for the celebration we share. When I reach for a stick, it's like I'm shaking hands with history. Thank you for connecting me to a greater community. It's more than a game to me. It's a gift to be a positive force in young athletes' lives. And I'm thankful I can help the next generation develop a love for the sport. When I was his age, those moments on the field meant everything. Thank you for giving us a way to stay connected, even as they get older. We're growing beyond goals on the field and our futures are united. Would you give me the opportunity to fuel aspirations and to ignite potential? So thank you, lacrosse. For inspiring me to be me. We are better, safer, and wiser together. And we're building a stronger future for everyone. It's coming. The world is coming to San Diego. 30 nations, 30 teams. Only one will be crowned world champion. There's nothing like playing for your country. This is the pinnacle of sport. Be here as legacies are forged and history is made. The 2022 World Lacrosse Women's World Championship on ESPN. Our Pool A play continues. Australia fans plentiful in the stands here at Unitas Stadium. Joe Beninati and Courtney martinez Connor set to get this one underway. There's Trish Adams of Australia. Her team settling in, trying to bounce back off of a loss to England. Last night was a tough one for them to have a quick turnaround in less than 24 hours and have to step on the field again. I do expect patience for their team. Scott Teeter is the man pushing the buttons for Team Canada. His squad came up short against the United States in the tournament opener, but I thought they acquitted themselves very well. They performed admirably in that defeat. 
They absolutely did. It was a tough first game to jump right out to the reigning world champions. However, Scott Teeter said, it's all right. We want to be playing our best lacrosse come the end of championship. The draw in white for Canada against Stacey Morlang in green for Australia as they battle for the opening draw. We are underway on a night when Team USA will conclude matters on this field. They'll be playing against Scotland. This is Canada and Australia, two teams eager to get that first W and settle in to this 2022 championship. Joe, when you play a lot of games in a short amount of time, it's about taking the air out of the ball a little bit, slowing things down, having a lot of game management. Again, a little bit more difficult for Australia as they did play last night. However, both teams, you want to make sure to control the tempo right from the very beginning. Erica Evans, stick check well there by Morlang. There was a foul. It'll stay Canada possession. 15-minute quarters in this World Championship. Baxter fires and a nice stop there. Right off the jump for Addie Cunningham. She gets into the groove as she did against England. And we see a ride, a pressure ride. Dana Doby jumping Australia's goalkeeper right away. Australia had a difficult time when clearing the ball from their defensive end. Obviously, Canada took notice of that, making sure to jump the keeper as soon as she makes a save, wanting to give her a difficult time when clearing the ball. This is Georgia Latch outside the 11 meter fan. We play running time in the World Championships in the first three quarters. The time stops in the last 30 seconds. It'll stop in the last two minutes of the fourth. Inside the restraining box, it's six on six. It's 10 on 10 overall in this tournament. Weaving away from pressure, that's Bonnie Yu, 22 in the green. Bring it on around. Closing. Latch fouled on the outside by Evans. Courtney, this game is played differently at the World Championships than it might be at the Division I level. Some of the most notable differences, you see the number of players on the field. When you were playing settled attack, it gives you a lot more space to be able to go to goal. Latch goes to goal and converts. Australia on the board first. Tough defense by Canada culminated into a foul being called. Three positions are not from the eight meter in international play. They're from the 11 meter. But again, because there's a larger space, defense is a little bit farther apart. So that creates a better opportunity when challenging to goal. And Georgia Latch right there, number 24, putting Australia on the board first. Georgia Latch from Melbourne, Australia. She plays collegiately about three miles away at Loyola. It's a partnership between Loyola and the, the nation of Australia that has been very profitable through the years. Latch the latest to come through town. 38 goals for Latch in her freshman year with the Greyhounds. The year of 2023 will be her sophomore campaign. Morlang and Morissette getting together inside the draw circle. Mara Wager, Jessica Borghoff, Yumi Yuki and Nicole Good are the officials for this one. Originally scheduled to be a 5 p.m. start, there was a 90-minute weather delay involved in the earlier game here. It was Pool C play, Germany all over Latvia by a 10-2 final. That 90-minute weather delay pushing things back for both this game and the nightcap, USA-Scotland. On a wraparound, Cunningham made the save uncordingly. Ball down, Morlang chasing along with uh, Erica Evans. And the whistle comes. Every single ball on the ground, ball in the air, we see intense battles for Canada as well as Australia. But that save right there, exactly what Australia needs in order to stay in the game. Big saves and clearing the ball safely. Jimerson, who was electric with a goal and three assists against the United States, feeds. Baxter fidgets outside the fan. Peroni off the split dodge, marked well by Stephanie McNamara, tenacious defender in the words of Trish Adams. Just getting going near the five minute mark. Hyron picks up Jimerson. Allie Jimerson feeds to the interior, that's deflected away. Australia doing the job at the defensive end. 
holding high-powered Canada off the board. And they're working their game plan and they're doing it well. They need to make sure to neutralize Dana Doby, Aurora accordingly, making sure to limit shots or to make shots from a bad angle. And that's exactly what's happening right now. If you look at the goalkeeping of Addie Cunningham, she's been able to come up with some quick saves and to clear the ball even quicker to start their offense. Already with a couple of stops, Laura Evans, Stephanie McNamara, Abby Thorne who just made that strong clear, and Beth Varga will be defending in green throughout the night against White Jersey Canada. One nothing advantage for the Aussies. Latch off the free position. This snapshot goes high. Closest to the ball where and when it leaves the field on the backup, that earns Sarah Smith possession, although the officials are going to say it belongs to Cam Halsall. And Canada will ignite its clear. Team Canada lost to Team USA in the opener of this tournament and in the championship game of 2017. It's about 1,800 days ago. This tournament delayed by the global pandemic pushed back from 2021 to where we are now this Friday night at the outset of July. Brooklyn Walker Welch, a national champion at North Carolina this past season, just about a month ago. Not far from here, victorious at Homewood Field on the campus of Johns Hopkins. Some may battle me when I say Maryland, one of the meccas of lacrosse, maybe New York, a few other states rival, but it or international or professional. We just had PLL in town. We're going to be having Athletes Unlimited soon as well. Great to have the coverage on ESPN. And from our perch here at United Stadium, we can tell that the parking lots are filling up. The fans are arriving. Kinna sweeps against McNamara. Here comes the double whistle. Stoppage in play. Megan Kinna getting repositioned in front of adding Cunningham. She'll have to slide over one hash. Kinna ran the Vancouver Marathon back in May. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't have made it that distance. <laughs> Closing, Kenna through three defenders, and Cunningham chests it down to make the save. Addie Cunningham played at St. Lawrence University back in 2015. As we see right there on the left of your screen, Addie Cunningham wearing number 11 in goal for Australia, standing tall making sure her feet are set. She's not jumping off of that goalie line. She's set, she's ready, she's waiting, and she's patient, which is so important for any goalkeeper, making sure that they're not jumpy inside the She looked patient the there, didn't she? Hands on hips, just chilling out. Former three-year starter at St. Lawrence in upstate New York. one nothing. Cunningham and Australia have the advantage. If you're just tuning in with us, it was Georgia Latch, a free position goal to get the Scoring started between these two teams with 0-1 marks in Pool A play. Five teams in Pool A, United States, Canada, England, Australia, and Scotland. We'll see the Scots later on tonight when they match up with the, the red, white, and blue of the United States. Beck Lane will keep it hot. There is no shot clock in the World Championships. Joe, super interesting. If you wanted to hold on to possession for the ball for the remainder of the game, you could if you are Australia at this point. Obviously, quarters make it a little bit more difficult. You have to win the draw at the end of or beginning of each quarter, excuse me. However, we're going to see some high powered offense. Hannah Nielsen behind the goal. She is more than capable of scoring. She is one of the NCAA leaders in points when she had her time at Northwestern. She won four national championships. Hannah dragging it away from the 11-meter fan. This is Theo Quas, who played collegiately at the University of Maryland. A bounce shot stopped by Halsall. There was a whistle on the release. We mentioned that there was a 90-minute weather delay in a Pool C play earlier on this field at United Stadium between Latvia and Germany. We are understanding that uh, foul weather is moving in again to this area. Just that time of year. Temperatures have been in the mid-90s most of the day. I can only imagine how hot it is on the field turf here at United Stadium. 
and after there's been a rain, it just seems to kind of kick up the humidity that much more. But these players, they're in shape. However, they do play a lot of games in a short amount of time. So not having a lot of rest, having to wait for the game to begin, they're just antsy to get back onto the field. And if weather begins, as long as it's just rain, they'll keep going. It's actually going to probably be more cooling for them to have rain falling than this heat. Aurora accordingly, two goals and two assists against the United States. She'll circle it up with Megan Kinnon. Accordingly, going to the goal, gets underneath, makes that one more look for Jimerson. And we hear a whistle. Accordingly, we'll get the free position chance. Aurora accordingly from the angle against Cunningham. Gets in there quickly, but bounced it wide. That won't happen very many times. This is the young lady, five in the white, who will be the cornerstone of Canada's offense moving forward, according to head coach Scott Teeter. Jimerson, no slouch. Swing it back behind the goal. Accordingly, getting a little pick screen from Dana Doby. We played 11 minutes. We've got one goal on the board. It belongs to Australia's Georgia Latch. Great pass inside, score! The put away for Jimerson. Aurora accordingly, number five for Canada. She does such a great job of having all eyes on her. She's shifty, she's quick, and when she's able to move defensive players back and forth, it makes the rest of the defense want to slide to her, and that's what opens up a cutting lane for a teammate just like Allie Jimerson. I asked head coach Scott Teeter for a scouting report on Allie, and he said three words, inside, righty, finisher. Apropos right there, you just saw that on video. Jimerson tying things up. The time continues to run until there are 30 seconds left in the first, second, and third quarters. Coach Teeter pleased with his offensive conversion there, leveling the score at one apiece. The best ever finish for Canada in the World Championships, silver in each of the last two installments, 2013 and 2017. Losing both times in the championship game to the United States. Canada has already suffered a Pool A loss to USA, a 16-11 setback back on Wednesday night here. Accordingly makes a neat move. Then a beautiful face dodge, walks right on in, and scores! Aurora accordingly showing all of her skills there. Aurora accordingly, when we look at her begin this dodge, we see those little stutters. That's what tied up that first defender, the sliding defender not breaking her feet down. But again, Aurora's shiftiness, her ability to see what's coming and to think about that next move that she's going to make. She has a great tuck before she threw it in a quick little fake before that finish, but it's her awareness of... One of six nations that's been in every one of these World Lacrosse Championships. Uh, formerly known as a, a World Cup, all the way back to 1982. Canada, back-to-back -back tallies, Jimerson and Cordingly, giving the white jersey Canadians the advantage late in this opening frame. Joe Beninati, Courtney Martinez, Connor, shouting out thanks to all the men and women in our technical crew. Busy and long day again for them today, with a heat bearing down upon Unitas Stadium. Brooklyn Walker Welch will carry. Baxter on the cradle. Six on six at this end of the field. 80 seconds remaining in the frame. No shot clock in the World Championships. Laura Evans. Backup netminder Carly Evans' sister there to defend in front of Cunningham. Peroni, very flashy, gets inside. Plays collegiately at Louisville. Over the top, snapshot, score! Erica Evans. Inside, you're going to see some action, some tough defensive play by Team Australia looking to match for those little picks on ball. Right there, we see Maddie Baxter give the ball up to her teammate in a battle between her and Australia, number 13. Ultimately, Maddie Baxter wearing number four in white is almost screening the goalkeeper, making it hard to make that save. She wasn't able to see where that ball was coming from. So as Erica Evans did a well-placed shot, again, 
making it a little bit more difficult for the keeper. As you can tell by the video, that's a pretty tall screen. Matty Baxter stands 5'10". Three unanswered now for Canada after the latch goal gave Australia the 1-0 advantage. Jimerson, Cordingly, and Evans. Her teammates call her Ricky. Erica Evans, another of the faces of Canadian lacrosse. Here she is once more, leaving it to Dobie, to the trailer Peroni, with time ticking. Final dozen seconds. Cunningham makes the steal for Australia. Dynamic netminder will start the clear. Not enough time here for Australia to build much offensively. This has heaved the length of the field, and the horn sounds, ending the opening quarter. Hall Saul and the Canadians. Kay Morissette defending stoutly against Georgia Latch. Team Canada on top by two. We go to quarter two in a moment on ESPN. It's a very high SPF day. You need a lot of sunscreen in the stands here at United Stadium where Canada has a 3-1 advantage over Australia. Courtney, the Aussies are well-versed with these world championships. This is a team, the only team, to win it other than the United States. Each time that Australia has won, they were on American soil. So this is a big deal for them being back in the United States. It's at Towson, Maryland this year. Previously, they won in 2005 at Annapolis. The oh. Aussies face uh, the United States tomorrow night. That game will be seen on ESPNU. 8 p.m. Eastern time is the start. I was surprised to learn the Aussies beat the United States five of the first seven meetings in World Championship World Cup play. Five of the first seven. When you look at Australia, it, it's not necessarily known for having a lot of lacrosse players. However, what players they do have, they do a great job of developing developing them and playing to America to play. I'm worried when I start to see the players picking up their suitcases. I'm worried that uh, we could very well be in another weather delay. We mentioned earlier Pool C play was interrupted, as were the neighboring fields here to United Stadium. 
This is a World Championship tournament that's involved 29 countries. Earlier in Pool C play, Latvia and Germany were delayed some 90 minutes due to weather. And it sure looks like Australia and Canada are about to make way to cover. You know, Joe, even though this could be a tough pill to swallow again, when you look at the NCAA championships that just happened this past May, it can oftentimes help the team who's behind. UNC ended up with the big win. However, they were losing. And sometimes you just need a little reset button and the weather can provide that. As you can see, the fans have been alerted of the weather delay. Better safe than sorry, although the, the skies appear to be clear. There aren't very many clouds in the skies. We are still under sunshine in Towson, Maryland. But the word has come down from World Lacrosse officials for the players and for fans to head for safer ground. We will return. Joe Beninati, Courtney Martinez, Connor with you. We'll continue when these two teams get back to the playing surface. It's the 2022 World Lacrosse Women's World Championship. In a weather delay, Canada has the 3-1 lead after 15 minutes. been delayed due to weather. Kay Morissette taking the draw for Canada in the white, Australia in green, and possession belongs to the Aussies off the draw. Georgia Latch with Brooklyn Walker Welch running stride for stride with her. Already off the bat, we see Australia winning their very first draw control of the game. That weather delay seemed to serve them well, making some adjustments. Oftentimes, it's just positioning your stick a little bit differently to make that ball come up and out, making sure that you have it in your stick. Beck Lane sent that one wide. Nielsen racing to the end line with Walker Welsh. Closest to the ball where and when it leaves the field. It's possession here for Australia. Hannah Nielsen, a legend in Australian lacrosse. Trish Adams, the head coach for the Aussies, said we rely on her. Lane turns the corner. A tough shot there that's delivered wide of the goal. Picked up off the turf by Emily Boissonneau to whistles with Morissette ailing. Courtney, you made reference to this. Goggles are not mandatory in the World Championship. Stick the follow through by Australia's Beck Lane right into the head of Kay Morissette for Canada. That's what culminated in the yellow card being called. Safety, whether you are wearing goggles or not, referees have an eye for both offense and defense doing anything dangerous. It's an immediate yellow card, and that is a yellow card that is unreleasable. So another different rule than what we generally see within NCAAs. Unreleasable for two minutes. Australia playing one player short. Beck Lane in the box for that dangerous follow through. Great move inside. Score! Peroni! A player up, Canada transitioned the ball so quickly. Again, with an extra player on the field, they're able to move that ball seamlessly. But Dana Doby, what great vision she had from the backside of the goal cage. First cutter, oftentimes that's not the one who's wide open, but a little bit of a defensive miscue for Australia and Canada with goal number four. Even with the mouthpiece showing, you could tell Peroni all smiles there. 
She's coming off an outstanding season at the University of Louisville where she's coached by her national team head coach, Scott Teeter. Peroni had three different five goal games with the Cardinals this year. It's 4-1 Canada. They've had four in succession on the score sheet. Nielsen helps get the draw for Australia in green. Latch picked up quickly on the outside. Bianca Chevry is a tenacious defender, 21 in the white. Six on six inside the restraining box, 10 on 10 in the World Championships. Nielsen fires. That's another shooting space call. No goal. No goal, even if the whistle was simultaneous. Again, a different role from the NCAAs to international play. But quick movement, eyes were up by Australia. It seemed like Hannah could have pitched a tent inside that 11 meter area. Nielsen ready to go from the 11 meter fan on this free position, walks in and fires. That hit the post. The ricochet winds up in the cross of Brooklyn Walker Welch. Nielsen, who was frustrated an evening ago, the Australians falling to Team England 12-4. England had a six-goal explosion in the fourth to win that one. Nielsen was kept off the board, no points. Another pipe by Hannah Nielsen, head coach at University of Michigan. But yet another yellow card for Ash Australia. Ashton Hyron assessed the yellow card. Two minutes, Canada goes back to a player up. Erica Evans will leave it. Peroni will swing it. The Canadians trying to lengthen their lead. Canada, which fell to the United States in the tournament opener back on Wednesday, 16 to 11. This is chased down by Peroni. You see Australia defensively, their sticks are up in the passing lanes. Sent wide by Evans. A race to the end line. It'll stay Canada ball. Jimerson brings it in quickly, looking for Dana Doby, crafty as ever. Into the double team, the teeth of it there, and it's stripped away, taken back nicely by the Australian defense. The Aussies with Laura Evans, Stephanie McNamara, Beth Varga, and Abby Thorne working to protect Addie Cunningham in goal. Beck Lane chased down at the midline, near to it. Canada still one player up with Hyron off on the sideline. Just of nearing the five minute mark of the second quarter now, Courtney, running time in the Women's World Championship. Now lacrosse is a game of runs and there's a lot of time left in this game. Australia has possession of the ball. There are no shot clocks in international play. They can take their time as much as they want, making sure they have the best possible shot on cage. They seem to move the ball well, see one another, but when you're a player down, there's definitely no need to be challenging to the goal until you are even. It's a big difference from what you and I will be seeing in three weeks time on ESPN when we unveil season two of Athletes Unlimited. Those players play with a 60 second shot clock. The ball spins. More Lang, methodical approach now for Australia. Latch gets it in gear. She has very strong stick work. Snaps his pass to the interior. Nielsen shovels it, stopped by Halsall. Cam Halsall, who made eight saves against the Americans a couple nights back. Help comes, Chevery along the end line. Nice outlet for Walker Welsh, and back comes Canada in the white jerseys. Wassano, who is the head coach at Pitt these days. Left side of the screen, Halsall stands tall. Excellent save by Cameron. And again, when you look at Hannah Nielsen, she was one of the leading points players when she was at Northwestern during her collegiate days. I know she's a bit frustrated because she's actually an excellent shooter, and she is a veteran on this Australian team. Once her shots start falling, expect this game to get even closer. That pass gets away. It's a turnover against Canada as Halsall directs her troops from the Canadian net. If you're just jumping on board with us, after a lengthy weather delay, Joe Beninati, Courtney Martinez, Connor with you. 2022 World Lacrosse Women's World Championships. Australia took the lead, Georgia Latch, off a free position shot, made it one nothing. Since then, Jimerson, Cordingly, Evans, and Peroni 
for the Canadians on top by three. Nielsen playing a two-person game with Mollison. Nielsen attacked and fouled by Boissano. Nielsen will direct traffic. Halfway through the second frame. Lights are starting to take full effect. This game was originally scheduled to begin at 5 p.m. Eastern time. But uh, two weather delays have uh, sent the schedule in flux. Adam Sear, you saw him on the sideline for Australia in his first year coaching at the senior national team. He's a, Trish Adams' is assistant. Come on, here we go. Exhorting the troops. Free position shot from the 11 meter. Blocked that shot, the delivery from Sarah Smith. Nielsen angles in, matched up with Blasino, who was named the head coach at Pitt back in June of 2019. Fledgling program. Turnaround bounce shot there from Morlang. Fought off, the whistle comes. Mara Wager, Jessica Borgoff, Yumi Yuki, and Nicole Good are the refs. Morlang assessed a yellow card from that group of officials. Once more, Canada goes a player up. Now one thing I like about Australia's defense, they do maneuver in the man down defense. Every player moving on a string. When you see one player move, the other is following shortly behind her. It's a well-oiled machine. They're communicating. They're matching cutters. Right about now, Courtney, I expect Dana Doby to uncork one of her patented shots pretty soon. Great read on the inside. Cunningham, the netminder, steals that one for Australia. Clearing time for the Aussies, Laura Evans. Pressure-packed defender. As you watch this play right here, very heads up in the goal cage, Addie Cunningham coming out, reading the play, seeing that the feed was gonna be inside. It was almost like they were leaving those players a little open. That way she could jump on that interception. These are the keys that we talked about. Australia needing to have good defensive play, as well as their keepers in the cage making saves. And after the weather delay, I think they've continued to step up, not just on their defensive end, but also at the draw control, which was lacking. 40 seconds left in the short-handed situation for Australia. We drift below five minutes to go in the opening half. This is quarter two. The lone goal in this frame provided by Canada's Nicole Peroni, who began playing lacrosse at age four with the Baby Blue Knights. Theo Quas walking off the remaining time in the shorthanded situation. We saw a shorthanded goal last night, in fact. In the matchup that uh, you and I called between England and Australia. Convincing win for Phil Collier's English side, 12-4. Back even now, as you see McNamara jog on. Smith keeps it hot, Nielsen fires, just missed that corner. Interestingly enough, despite Australia only scoring four goals last night, one of them were in a player down situation. They just transitioned the ball so quickly up the field that they actually had numbers. Associate head coach there for Canada, Gary Gates, still bathed in sunlight. The sun continues to set as we near the eight o'clock hour Eastern time. Unitas Stadium in Towson, Maryland, named after Johnny Unitas, former NFL MVP quarterback of Baltimore Colt fame. Latch digs in, flag, foul called. We have been whistle plagued in this uh, resumption of play.
Ready to go on the free position, it's Latch. Plays collegiately at Loyola, just a few miles away. Rips that one off the post. She had Hall Saul beaten. A lot to like about Georgia Latch. The future is very bright for her. Beck Lane covered up on the perimeter by Megan Kinna. Nielsen works from the top against Walker Welch. Walker Welch, who saw a lot of tough defensive assignments this season with national champion North Carolina. Latch on the go, feeds it, just gets out of the cross there, Amalison. Nielsen collects. Off the interchange, Beck Lane drive over top of the crossbar. Australia's generating shots. They're moving the ball well. They're dodging off of one another. They're kind of pick and rolls. They're working well in their groups of two. They just need to get their shots on goal in order to bring themselves back into a closer. Good face dodge there. Bounced wide by Kwas. The shooting percentage has not been a good one to this point for Australia. Latch around the screen set by Nielsen. Chevry there to defend, two-way midfielder. Bianca had a, a goal in 2017 World Championship. She tallied against Wales. Quick stick inside, great save. Paul saw using her gloved hand to take that one out of the circle. Kenna, clear first. Kenna, Kenna. Cam Hall saw was And that's quite difficult in goal. Making sure that you're able to have quick turns. When a feed is coming from behind, a goalie needs to make sure that she's stepping quickly, finding that ball, sighting it. Makes it look easy. Courtney, from time to time, we've seen the coaches on the sideline shielding their eyes from the sun. That sun right now is blaring right into the eyes of the Australian keeper, Addie Cunningham. And that's something Canada is going to want to take advantage of. The sun is going to be setting, continuing to go down. It's not going to be an advantage for them in the third or fourth quarter. That's why you see them battling so hard to get that ball back. Cunningham tiptoes her way out of the defensive end for Australia. Under a minute remaining in the half. Stop time kicks in at 30 seconds in the first, second, and third quarters of the Women's World Championships. A pass well defended at midfield, knocked down. Scooping there is Walker Welch. Brooklyn Walker Welch fenced in along the sideline by Mollison. Canada's defense will clear. Chevery under a half a minute. Losing Latch there. Latch makes a nice trail check. Too close though, too close to the head of Chevery, according to the official fans putting up a protest. They thought that was a clean takeaway from Latch. Joe is a former takeaway defender. I thought it was clean too, but I don't know. Are we 200 yards up in the sky right now? Just a three minute cab ride away. <laughs> so the referees do have a closer look down on the field. Nevertheless, even if a check does not hit a player in the head, Referees are looking to make sure it's not too close. Time expires. Just one half of play. We still have 30 minutes to battle. Canada and Australia. The Aussies, the number four seed in Pool A. Canada seeded second behind the United States. Team USA expected to play in the nightcap. At the half with the Canadians on top by three. I've seen it all before. Let's go, Tiger. Just as sharp with the bend the knee. My main man, money. The king. We ain't nothing. I ain't seen. Okay, old school. Have you seen someone ball like John Morant? No, you can't. You've never seen anyone like a thing. The point got Queen, Sky, or Chloe Kim. Do you know there's never been anyone else like them? Look, OG. No disrespect. I know you think you've seen everything, but you ain't seen nothing yet. Checkmate. <laughs>
Every player knows the skills you learn on the field can be the foundation for anything you choose to do in life. Thank you for the sweat, the tears, the pride and for the celebration we share. When I reach for a stick, it's like I'm shaking hands with history. Thank you for connecting me to a greater community. It's more than a game to me. It's a gift to be a positive force in young athletes' lives. And I'm thankful I can help the next generation develop a love for the sport. When I was his age, those moments on the field meant everything. Thank you for giving us a way to stay connected, even as they get older. We're growing beyond goals on the field. And our futures are united. Would you give me the opportunity to fuel aspirations and to ignite potential? So thank you, lacrosse. For inspiring me to be me. We are better safer and wiser together and we're building a stronger future for everyone the action has simmered down after 30 minutes of play here at unitas stadium in towson team canada the last four goals on the board a 4-1 advantage for them at the half with highlights to come straight ahead next Stars of Canadian lacrosse right there, the attack trio, Jimerson, Doby, and Cordingly. Canada has the 4-1 advantage over Australia, and uh, head coach Trish Adams after 30 minutes of play. Scott Teeter right there is an interested bystander as well. Joe Beninati and Courtney Martinez. Connor with you. Courtney, a five-time national champion at Maryland Court. We saw a lengthy weather delay, unsafe weather conditions. Players and fans exited the stadium. They returned in the aftermath what happened in the aftermath Australia realized we are in this game it was only a 3-1 game 
However, it gave him a time to reset, communicate, talk about what was happening defensively, but more importantly at the draw. You cannot win or score goals if you aren't possessing the ball. So second part after that weather delay, they started to win the draw. They actually had two, even though they're still down in the draw control category by five to two, they stepped up. Grab a scouting report on Canada. The first thing you're gonna see, one of them at least, is watch out for number five, Aurora Accordingly. She delivers. Aurora Accordingly, number five in white for Canada. She does such a great job of creating. She creates by her shiftiness. She creates by that first step. But most importantly, she has her eyes up. She has the ability to dodge and feed. Addie Cunningham in goal. She was an integral part for the defense for Team Australia, keeping the score at just three to one prior to that weather delay. She made sure to keep her eyes locked on the ball, stepping to, taking away angles, and even intercepting when they were a man down. So many of the head coaches are saying, I'm gonna play the hot goalie. We'll see if Australia stays with Cunningham in quarter number three. It rolls your way in just a few moments with Canada on top. We want the gold medal. We've been dreaming of it our entire lives. But this summer, we want more. We have an opportunity together to change the sport and women's athletics for the better. The eyes of the lacrosse community will be on us. Never has this sport been more popular. Never has this platform been bigger. So what's this about? A team of talented women with a shared goal. Inspiring a new generation. One whose identity is a sense of pride and not a limitation. Relentlessly pursuing equity in our sport and beyond. We want the greatness of all women's athletes to shine. The world will be watching. Let's put on a show. This is more than a medal. Are you with us? Fasten your seatbelt. The game you've always loved just found a new gear. Introducing World Lacrosse Sixes. <laughs> it's speed and scoring. Tempo and transition. Athleticism and action. It's big time energy packed onto a smaller playing surface. It's the game you've always loved. Brought to you at warp speed. It's lacrosse on the Autobahn. Don't blink. This is World Lacrosse Sixes. You're watching the 2022 World Lacrosse Women's World Championship on ESPN. Nearby Baltimore's Inner Harbor. We're in Towson, Maryland at Unitas Stadium. The Adams Sisters coaching Australia against Canada in Pool A play. Addie Cunningham's squad trailing by three at the halftime break. Joe Beninati and Courtney Martinez-Connor with you. Scott Teeter's Canadian squad fell behind by one. In the opening frame, Georgia Latch was on the board for Australia, but Jimerson, Cordingly, Evans, and Peroni have struck in succession. Morissette back to the draw. Digging in there. Control belongs to Australia. Second half unfolds. Better late than never. After a second unsafe weather delay, brought a halt to the proceedings here at the World Championships. 29 nations represented. Largest of its kind. This is pool A play. Nielsen, seven in the green for Australia. The United States, 
Scheduled to play against Scotland tonight. Scotland beginning its tournament. Kick save there. Hall saw with a great rejection at point blank range. Georgia Latch showed that she is capable of dodging from all over the field. Baxter's pass for Jimison's deflected and covered up with a whistle. However, we often call, call that the turf monster that jumped out and grabbed her. I hate it when that happens. Those pesky turf monsters. <laughs> they need to be vacuumed out of the uh, field turf. There's no other explanation other than when you just trip on the turf. But Australia coming out. We see this right here, that little move. And then we saw just a, a quite misstep. That could have been goal number two for Australia. I do like the pep in their step that they've had ever since the weather delay. But Canada unwilling to give them anything easy. Their defense is so tough, they're physical, they stay on the hands of their opponent, making it really hard to want to dodge through them, through that traffic, because you know you're going to have contact being made. Caitlin Watkins, the defensive coordinator for Canada, has to be pleased. Whistle here. Free position shot coming for Bonnie Yu. Played collegiately at St. Joseph University. She's heading into her junior year in 2023. Yu pulls the trigger, had it blocked. Excellent recovery check there by Peroni, but Peroni is going to be flagged. Sends uh, Yu right back to the free position. Aussies were one for two in their loss to England in terms of free position shots yesterday. Yu from the outer hash will not shoot that one, settling in for the six on six. Nielsen has the ball a lot. Walker Welch with her in a battle of number sevens. Nielsen was hit up high. They'll move Walker Welch four meters behind. So you can see Hannah Nielsen, number seven, upset that a yellow card was not given. Again, just because she's not wearing goggles, she wants to make sure that that yellow card is being issued. International play, you do not need to wear goggles. Many of the veteran players choosing not to wear them. Bonnie Yu picked up on the outside by Baxter. The officials definitely getting their money's worth in this game, Court. We have uh, seen a number of yellow cards. This one is going against Team Canada and Erica Evans. We immediately saw three players sprint off the field for Team Australia. Three new ones coming on. This is all about getting your players set to be able to run your player up offense. She's not going to be taking the shot if I giving you my best guess. They want to make sure they run the set play. Two minute yellow card penalty. It's non-releasable, so they can score three goals during this time frame. You've seen this game before. You guessed correctly. Six on five here for the women in green. The pass to the inside, Nielsen. Push it out there, drive that sailed wide. Stephanie Kelly is on the interior, number one in the green. Seven back behind the goal is Hannah Nielsen. Kelly, Nielsen, and Latch, the starting attack trio for the Aussies. Moore Lang, three-time all-world performer in her career. Has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? You, Bonnie, that is. Morlang stepping away from her defender. Swing it down low. Nielsen snuffed out by Halsall, who was ready at the near post. Nielsen will goose this one, keep it alive for Australia. Still a player up. Oftentimes in the player up, you just swing the ball around the perimeter, forgetting that you do need to penetrate. You need to make sure to drive as you are looking for those feeds inside. Because oftentimes you can catch the defense flat-footed and are able to take the dodge on. Nielsen took her eyes off that last pass. Halsall pounced on it. Cam Halsall, left side of your screen, doing a nice job on the angle there against Nielsen as the shorthanded situation for Canada is soon to expire. 
just about 25 seconds from now as we've crossed the six minute mark in the third. No scoring in this frame. Courtney, this has the potential to be a very difficult, physically taxing tournament. You could play as many as eight games in 11 days if you go all the way to the gold medal game. Tiring indeed. It's all about making sure to have proper hydration, fuel your body, get enough rest, and taking care of yourself. So many of the players get into cold tubs after games, and it's not a choice. <laughs> it's a mandatory decision that the coaching staff makes. That way your body is recuperating a bit quicker than what it would without. Nice stick check. Bonnie Yu relieving accordingly of the ball, and away comes Australia looking for transition. On a hop just away from Morlang, she'll chase it down. Six minutes into the third. She was busy. She was raising three kids. Seeing Stacy back for Team Australia, I think is super special when you're able to have as many veterans who've been through this before. She was a part of the gold medal 05 team along with Hannah Nielsen. It, it just gives them a confidence on the field. They've been through it before. They know what it takes. Brenna Shanahan with outstanding defensive work. You see her there with her right leg, right thigh bandage with Brenna with stout defense forcing the turnover and this triggers Canada the other way. Annabelle Child, known for her ability to come up with ground balls. She'll find Hannah Morris. Morris is a player who has a powder keg of a shot. She unloaded a couple of goals in the win against the United States, or the loss, I should say, back on Wednesday night. Doby had three against the Americans, including the goal of the tournament so far. Her pass goes awry. At the restraining line, they joust for it. It comes up for Canada and Megan Kinna. So if there's any player who has the ability to make Sports Center top 10 goals, it's Dana Doby. Just about any time you see her on the field with a stick, she had number two on Wednesday night in terms of Sports Center top actions on the field. It's always great to be able to see lacrosse out there, men's and or women's. Oftentimes it's the offensive plays. Maybe we'll get defense one of these days. Free position shot. Doby was ready to step into it. The whistles as the officials set the players around the 11 meter fan in the world championships. Doby against Cunningham here. Little game of one on one. Drive and score. Dana Doby. Dana Doby for Canada. We talk about number two, seven. Her ability to be creative is amazing. Her stick is her wand, but her shooting ability to put that ball, not offside hip, but stick side hip, but it, the power that she was able to generate, pushing, pulling, flexing with her wrist. She's incredibly strong, but it's the placement ultimately right there on that 11 meter free position. It's not an eight meter, it's farther out from the college game and she was able to shoot it just as well. Scott Teeter there on the sideline, her head coach, she refers, or rather he refers to Dana Doby, calling her the Gary Gate of women's lacrosse. That is huge praise. It absolutely is. Many people don't realize before Dana headed off to the University of Maryland, she started her career at Ohio University, now defunct program. Doby working in, fouled at the top of the uh, fan. Courtney, this is the play that everybody was talking about back on Wednesday evening. Look at that. An all-world defender all over Dana's back. And she was able to still collect the ball, realize the space that she had to her offside. The Twizzler, the offside hip, the swivel. Amazing job. Canada strikes again. You can never take your eyes off their offense. It's 5-1. And now improving to 6-1 with six unanswered goals for the Canadians. Doby back to back. 
We saw Addie Cunningham getting a piece of that. Again, a powerful shot. Not a lot you can do defensively in goal. The ball is coming at you so quick. Dana, upward 70s, maybe even low 80s on that shot, just 11 meters away. It's coming at you oh so quick. Uh, Courtney, we watched them work out. We watched Team Canada uh, in a practice session. They even scrimmaged uh, Australia uh, in the days prior to this World Championship opening up. And from field level, when you're standing next to the Dobie shot, it's frightening how it explodes out of her cross. And she does it with an almost effortless type of power. Truly effortless. That's exactly what I was going to say. She makes it look easy. She involves her whole body, her torso, really stepping into it, twisting with all her power and driving those arms forward. That's where she's able to get most of her action, then ultimately that little flick at the end. Just cashed in back-to-back -back goals for Canada to improve this lead to 6-1. I looked at her stats in 2017. 19 shots on goal. Care to guess how many goals she scored? 16. 17. Ah, that was going to be my 17. first 17. Not bad. That's a that's, pretty high shooting percentage. That's an amazing shooting percentage. Oftentimes, as a coach, you say, okay, if you can be near that 50% mark, and obviously that blows it out of the water. So Dana has been a longtime assistant coach at Loyola under Jen Adams, who's one of the assistant coaches for Australia, and they work so well together. It's one of those coaching staffs where they just gel, they work. It's seamless, they can finish one another's sentences, but it's also their ability to see things that other people can't. The game comes so easily to them, but they're able to put it into simple terms for others and to help elevate them as well. Earlier today on United Stadium turf in Pool C play, Germany beat Latvia 10-2. There was a 90-minute unsafe weather delay in that game, backing the one up that Trish Adams and Jen Adams were most uh, interested in. Tessa Helf of Munich, Germany, one of the stars in that game earlier today. She had three goals. It's a 6-1 Canada advantage with 5.08 remaining in the third. United States on the schedule tonight. Should be meeting Scotland, Scotland's first game in Pool A play. 29 different nations descending upon Towson, Maryland for this. Uh, big thank you to USA Lacrosse, Courtney, for all the help in running this tournament. They've been a big boost to world lacrosse and helping with all the logistics. There are a lot of things going on with a tournament of this size, better than 550 athletes. In tight, off the post. Beck Lane, here's an unfriendly ping. Back comes Canada looking for numbers in transition. Racing with it. Lydia Sutton kicks it off. Morris fouled by McNamara. A great two-man game, a little draw and dump for Australia with Beck Lane. <laughs> However, another post just seems like the ball isn't quite bouncing Australia's way, and it literally hit off of Hannah Nilsson after hitting the post right to the goalkeeper. And right now, Team Canada, Hannah Morris positioned at the 11-meter fan. <laughs> Ready to uncork her vicious left-handed shot if given the opportunity. Morris sets her feet. Powers that one to the corner. She's practically unstoppable from the perimeter. Australia seems to have found I'm sorry, Canada seems to have found success with their power shots from the 11 meter fan as opposed to running it in. Oftentimes, because it's farther out, just winding up and really cranking has what's proven successful for their team, not letting the crashing defenders in from either side come anywhere near their stick. This has to be a worrisome trend, Courtney, for Team Australia. They were in a, a tight, close game uh, an evening ago with England, and then it all spiraled the wrong way, specifically in the fourth quarter of that game, England prevailing 12-4. Team England is off today, but in a similar fashion now, Canada is putting goals back to back to back. It becomes even more important for 
Australia to somehow manage to get a draw control here. You know, and that's what I assume both Trish and Jen Adams right there, the coaches for Australia are talking about. We see the emphatic movements that Jen is talking with her players about. Jen to the left, Trish to the right on your screen. You know, it, we look at what the third quarter has provided for Canada. Three 11 meter free position shots. They've all culminated into goals, three of them, each time they've wound up and taken a shot. So Australia is saying, let's just limit our fouls and let's also limit the amount of times that we're fouling the other team and giving them a yellow, a player up opportunity. We don't need to give them anything easy at this point. Free position shots didn't hurt the Australians yesterday. England was just two for seven from the 11 meter fan. But we have seen Canada strike pay dirt a couple of times in this third quarter already. We were 4-1 Canada in the white at the halftime break. Dana Doby jogging back out to the draw circle, lined up with Madison Copeland. Copeland, who has played extremely well on the Australian circuit, referencing those three positions, Canada is three for five tonight. And Australia, at the opposite end, has not converted in any of its five opportunities. Number five is Aurora accordingly, and she will pick up every ground ball that's loose in midfield with her speed. She has a little bounce to her step. I call it the Energizer Bunny. She's running, seems like she's kind of floating on air with each and every step that she has. Two goals, two assists, and a loss to the United States a couple nights back. 118 points in, at the uh, University of Maryland, and a Tawaratan Award finalist. Canada's offense continues to hum a little bit more than three minutes to go. Accordingly, inside, and she was clobbered on her way to the circle. As we watch this replay right here, Dana Doby with the ball giving a nice little no-look feed to the inside. It's those extra little touches that she adds to the game. Makes it more exciting, but also makes it very hard to defend if you're Australia. Looks like a basketball point guard there with a look away feed. Accordingly, on the free position, there was movement, and the whistles will stop play. They'll do it again. Aurora accordingly, who played on the under 19 national team for Canada when she was only 15. She's ahead of the curve. Time ticking. Running time until there are 30 seconds left in this quarter. Wide open, Morris. That was too easy. She missed that one high. Communication-wise, you see Hannah Nielsen for Australia. She's up at the line, communicating the entire time to the defense, talking them through these player down situations. Amazing Doby flick of the wrist there. Snapshot Cunningham with a stop. Courtney, you were referencing some of those self-inflicted wounds for Australia. They picked up four yellow cards in this game tonight. Still with 17 minutes left in regulation. Bonnie Yu looks to clear. Connecting the dots with Theo Quas through midfield. A little bit less than two minutes to go in the third. Seven unanswered goals for Canada after Georgia Latch gave Australia the lead. Long time between drinks for the women in green. Quas will isolate against Baxter off the split dodge. She scores! Theo Quas. Theo Quas in the green wearing number 12. She's a Maryland graduate. Look at that, that little stutter, that little shake and bake before she accelerated around her defensive player. What I like about that is she released her shot before those sliding, crashing in players were coming in from the opposite side. When space is created, obviously you want to make sure to take it. Little jab and accelerate to goal. 
and then a quick release is what gave Australia that second goal for them. I think if they, if they can keep maneuvering the ball around, finding those mismatches offensively for them, they can get back into this game pretty quickly. That was a drought of more than 40 minutes that was just ended by the Quas tally to make it 7-2. To the draw circle, Morissette and Copeland. Ground ball, Hannah Nielsen has it in her cross. With time to operate, it's fumbled. Picked up by Sarah Mollison. Mollison was ready to restart. Rough housing with the youngster, Megan Kinna. Mollison being lectured by the official with 20 seconds remaining. Last call here for the Aussies. Smith gets to the outside. Down to 10. Canada pressures out defensively. Nielsen waits. Down to three. Feed, fire, blocked. Paul Saul and the Canadian defense stands uh, up to that test. Cam and her friends, including Aurora accordingly, five better than Australia after three quarters of play. Team Canada has turned it up. No surprise, Dana Doby, the trigger person. Morris, two, a rain down of left-handed shooters on ESPN. Skies are looking bright over United Stadium here in Towson, Maryland. Women's World Championship festivities continuing. Canada, 7-2 leaders over Australia after three quarters. We have the United States coming up on tap with Scotland tonight. Expected to get going around 9.30 Eastern. Tomorrow, the United States is on the schedule. Check your listings. We approximate a 7.30 p.m. start time. It's the United States and Australia. The Australians with a very difficult schedule to start this uh, 
Pool A play in the World Championships. They matched up with England last night. They're battling with uh, Canada tonight. They get the high-powered Stars and Stripes tomorrow. See that one on ESPNU. Inside the draw circle, Copeland and Morissette. Official. Yumiyuki of Japan, Nicole Good of New Zealand. We've heard a lot from their whistles in this one. Canada fell behind early, posted the next seven goals. Theo Kloss is the last lady on the board. Her tally for Australia brought the third quarter scoring summary to a conclusion. Accordingly, off the hop, splits to the inside. Patented snake-like moves towards the goal, and she drew a foul. Addie Cunningham's gone the distance. Her backup is Carly Evans. Cam Hall-Saul has been the, the netminder cover to cover between the pipes for Canada. Free position, accordingly, right to the cage. Bounce shot, she scores. Accordingly, second on the night. Stark difference than what we saw for Dana Doby or Hannah Morris at the 11 meter free position. Aurora, accordingly, she gets such a quick takeoff. She is a sprightly player, that acceleration to goal, she protects so well, and ultimately, she's able to make everything look easy. She brings a stick in front of her body, shielding it from those defensive players, but she capitalizes on what works best for her. That's her speed. It's so nice to see her being able to roam freely. You think back to the national semifinals, this year, she played for Maryland. Boston College face guarded her for most of that game. Tried to take her out of the flow. Nielsen overruns the ground ball. Morissette is there inside the draw circle with help. And it's Kay Morissette who scoops to safety. Oftentimes, you're wondering why the referees are bringing them back to the spot of the foul. In this case, NCAA, much like how there's shot clocks in the NCAA game, but no shot clocks internationally, you have to have your feet stopped before you can continue on. But we see that this there's is a, a throw. throw. Yeah. First throw we've seen in the World Championships that you and I have seen. Same for Rachel DeCecco, who will join me tomorrow night on ESPNU for Canada for the United States and Australia. This is Canada and Australia 8-2 for the Canadians after the accordingly strike. It's another one of those differences offsetting fouls. It's a throw in the international game. Used to be a while back in the NCAA women's game, but now it's just switching possession depending upon who gets the automatic from the very first of the game. Nearing the three minute mark and the bottom of the hour, along with Courtney Martinez, Connor, I'm Joe Beninati. We shout out thanks again to all the men and women in our technical crew. Full day for them getting to uh, Unitas Stadium right around sunrise time. Latch bothered back behind the goal. Run over by Boissano. It'll stay Australia ball. Georgia Latch had seven three goal hat tricks in 2022 playing for the Greyhounds nearby at Loyola. Driving in, she scores! Latch finds the short side. You can hear the Australian coaches that entire time echoing certain players in three seconds, 14 in three seconds, so they were almost nervous to slide towards the ball, knowing that either a shooting space or a three-second call was going to be made. Georgia Latch going straight to the goal, seeing nobody was really committing to her on the defensive end, and I, I think it was in large part 
due to the call of Adam Sears calling out different things. Three seconds, shooting space. And oftentimes it just takes that second to make you second guess yourself. And that gave Georgia Latch that opening. Always colorful Aussie fans appreciate that work. Latch is second on the ninth. Important draw control possession belongs to Canada. This is a part in the game where Australia needs to string some tallies together if they are to chase the Canadians down with just over 10 minutes left in regulation. Baxter shaking loose from Varga. Foul called against Varga. Courtney, in about three weeks' time, you and I will be calling Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse in its second season on the ESPN family of networks this time around. And we have heard more whistles in this game than we might hear in an entire weekend of play at that level. That is a true story. While the international game is more physical than the collegiate game, we have seen a lot of whistles tonight. You do not see them in women's professional lacrosse as much. And you have to remember, all of these officials, these aren't groups that are used to working with one another. We have officials from every single country. Off the post, Evans picked up quickly there by Varga. And Cunningham will start the cleat. Head coach for Canada, Scott Teeter, says, you know, the, the game, the women's game's evolved. It's been modernized with the rules. We're seeing changes made. We're going to, I think, eventually see a shot clock in the next World Championships. I think that's more than firmly under discussion. You know, it's much needed in the game. So Farnos, send it wide. Just makes the game faster, quicker, more exciting. However, there are roster limits in World Championship play. So because of that, I know coaches, if you're gonna add a shot clock, they're gonna wanna see more players be allowed to step onto the field. Quas, face dodge there, rolling back. Good defense on the outside from Evans. Baxter comes up with a scoop. Before she outletted to Peroni, there was a whistle. We've heard Team USA coach Jenny Levy campaign for the increase in number on the roster. All alone in tight there, behind the back chance, snuffed out. LeClear picked up by Nielsen. Australia has 7.50 left, needing a five-goal comeback. The other thing we enjoy with Athletes Unlimited is the occasional two-point goal. We don't see a two-point arc out there either. <laughs> there is not a two-point arc. You know, there's no shooting space. There's no three seconds in the professional game on the women's side, and it does make it a bit more exciting. Again, there's less whistles, less of the free position shots. Halfway through the fourth, two teams have traded goals in this frame. Mollison, fouled by Brennan Shanahan. Mollison going to the cage. Quick stick, score! Safarnos. Again, we hear another one of those calls coming in from the sideline. Assistant coach Adam Sears saying from the dot. So they have these little offensive sets as you should coming in from a settled situation. Run a little offensive set off of that. She had a few options, near side pipe as well as the offside pipe playing that defensive player at the top of the crease, back and forth, whoever she was matching or not was gonna be the one to get the step and the feed. Second goal in as many games for Haley. She tallied against England last evening. She did not play in 2017. She tore her ACL basically on the eve of that World Championship tournament. Canada, more possession off the draw. Excellent work by Kay Morissette. She continues to lead her team in draw controls as she did back in 2017. Canada 
Last check, 11 to five in draw control. Less than six minutes to go. Start slowing it down now if you're Canada. You know, taking air out of the ball is certainly something that they can do. However, they are so lethal and they've been doing such a great job offensively. They're only up by four goals. Four, a goal can happen literally in seconds. Since lacrosse is a game of runs, I don't expect for them to take too much out. They're still gonna be attacking the cage, but maybe just taking a little bit longer than they normally would. Maddie Baxter plays collegiately at Syracuse under the direction of Team USA star Kayla Trainer. Expected to see Team USA in Scotland coming up soon. Last time we heard an expected 9.30 p.m. Eastern time start for Team USA, which beat Canada a couple nights ago. And for Team Scotland, it's initial game in these world championships. Doby's in no hurry. Nor is Evans as they work it far on the perimeter. Jimerson hawked there on the outside by Laura Evans. Did I just say they were still gonna go to goal? <laughs> it looks like with how far they're spreading things out, they're taking a lot more time than initially proposed. So stepping out, we see Australia taking a few steps out, at least on ball, maybe adjacent, because they need the ball back in order to score. Courtney, if it's in the rules, you might as well shrink the game. That's why I brought it up to you. They have a four goal lead. They're not going to the cage whatsoever. There's no shot clock that's uh, behooving them to go to the goal. So might as well use it if it's to your advantage. Evans, far from the cage. Morlang hovering with her. Evans off the flip to Peroni. Less than four minutes now. Stop time kicks in with two minutes to go in the fourth in these world championships. The Australians, recognizing that they need the ball back, are going to start to extend defensively. Got to press out here. Doing that is Abby Thorne. You could just hear from the sideline, Coach Gary Gate, an assistant coach for Team Canada, said, handle the pressure for another 40 seconds. So with that being said, curious if every single player is going to step out for Australia since they know they're going to be holding the ball. Why not step out, see if you can take advantage of any miscues. Accordingly, going to the goal, fouled there by Sarah Smith. Before too long, you're gonna start to see Addie Cunningham, the goalkeeper for Australia, sneak out of her circle to defend and try and double. Anything you can do to force a turnover now. Floated inside, that was a pass. Doby keeps the ball moving. Peroni ducks inside. No foul call there, so Australia does stand tall defensively. 2.40 left, they need four. We look at this dodge by Team Canada. Nice little check defensively, holding their position. You're entitled to your space defensively. A great cause turnover for Australia right there and a much needed time to get the ball back. Canada and Australia each has one timeout remaining. You're allowed two of them throughout the course of the night. Those timeouts are 90 seconds in duration. They do not extend over to extra time if overtime is required, although each team will get one per overtime period. Mollison will share it with Nielsen. Bring it this way to Latch, who has two goals in the contest. 1.45 to play. Off the flip, Nielsen from the angle was fouled. Clipped there up high by Canada's captain, Lydia Sutton. So many coaches on the field for these two teams. Lydia is very active as a high school coach in the Minnesota area. Nielsen fires, scores! Hannah Nielsen had to have it, and she delivers. Joe, that was one of those hashes where you don't have much angle. She even took away more of her angle, hedging towards the left-hand side, but that gave her stick a little bit more time before that defender came crashing into her right. 
Again, that's something that a coach would do. What is my best possibility right now? I'm taking away angle, but I know I'm a sharp shooter. I'm quick off the line. So ultimately putting them within three. Australians need a strategy here for a draw possession. Courtney, anything that you can do, anything that Madison Copeland can do specifically against Morissette to get this ball back for Australia. A huge draw late in regulation. Copeland came up with it, but she heard a whistle and looked skyward as possession goes to Canada. Stop time now in the final one minute and 33 seconds. Youngster for Canada, Jill McNaughton, just turned 18, just graduated high school. She's on her way to play at nearby Johns Hopkins and she will be a very good Blue Jay in the future. 114 left. McNaughton playing keep away with Annabelle Child. Child stick checked, harassed there on the outside by Varga. Time continues to tick, less than a minute. Each of these teams coming up short in their initial game. Canada lost to the United States, Australia to England. Jimerson matched up there with Beck Lane. Lane fouled Jimerson, 44 seconds left. <laughs> Aussies need to press out, time's a wasting. Trailing by three. Megan Kinna keeping it alive for Canada. Canada gets the day off tomorrow. Australia against the United States on ESPN U. Final 20 ticks of this one. Australia helpless as Canada runs the time away. Down to 10. Under it. Joe Australia has not had an easy go of it to have three difficult games all consecutively to start the World Championships. It's very difficult. And they had a very strenuous travel experience to get here. Close to 50 hours coming through San Francisco. Doby lets it fly! And she will add to her tallies. Dana Doby has back-to-back -back hat tricks in this tournament. Three of the five goals have been 11 meter free positions in this fourth quarter. Both of Canada's goals have come from a free position shot. Finding success, Dana Doby with her wind up power shot. Almost half of Canada's offense this evening, Courtney has come from the free position 11 meter fan. Four goals for Canada in that regard. And they are about to put down Australia. Australia falls to 0-2 in Pool A play. Canada levels its mark at 1-1 one one with a 9-5 victory over the Australians. Standout thoughts for you? You know, I like that I saw some fight from Australia. They won the fourth quarter. While they came up with the first goal of the game, they figured out how to battle back. And that's what's important. You want to learn from your earlier games and they have probably the most difficult schedule to start everything off. So you can learn from each and every game, but obviously we can see how dominant Canada is at the draw. They can win possession easily for their team, but I expect for them to have a big talking to from their coaching staff about coughing up the ball. They had a lot of turnovers and that's not something that's normal for Team Canada. We saw the Australian huddle there and Hannah Nielsen telling her mates to keep their chins up. Falling to the Canadians by the final score of 9-5. For Courtney Martinez, Connor, for all the men and women in our hardworking crew, Joe Beninati, thanks for your time. Reminder, United States-Scotland expected 9.30 Eastern on ESPN+. Plus.
This has been a presentation of ESPN. Tonight, Team Canada downs the Aussies.